What if I told you that among 7 billion people, you could become one of the most recognizable faces on the planet? The riches, fame, and fortune, prominence in society. But to do that, you must stay in one place for 72 days, no contact with the outside world, and with 21 other people competing for the same thing, with an all-seeing eye watching everything. Fuck out of my face, are you stupid? If you try to touch me, I'll hit you. Please. Just eat in peace. And along the path to your destiny, can you withstand the lies? I have to nominate people on Sunday to people. Like you guys have to be cutting your week to be able to do that. You're giving me a note card to call you guys. The fact. Your whole body is like a drumstick of chicken. Get out of your car, my baby. I love you. I love you. Romance. The emotion. In competition. The game is in the name. So, are you willing? This is Big Brother. But to understand what this is, we must go back to the beginning. The year is 1997. This man, John DeMaul, decides to bring a novel to life. He starts to develop a game show concept based on the book 1984 by George Orwell, written in 1949. It would take another two years before this could become a reality, and it did on September 16, 1999, with the very first episode of Big Brother Netherlands. But little did he know that a global phenomenon had been born. So this is where we talk about Big Brother Africa and the rise and fall of that show. Now this show started in May 2003. I was six years old when it started. I have not been able to find the footage for this but I remember so clearly that the housemates were brought in helicopters. This show was hosted by Mark Pilgrim and they had this vault thing. I, I remember they had a vault. I don't know what that was about, but that was some serious level of hype, honestly. This was a season that had Gaetano, Sami B from Ghana who went out in the fourth week, I think, and then Cherise from Zambia who went on to win the whole thing. And then the show took a four year break and we never saw anything of it again and then 2006 came and then the first season of Big Brother Niger started. And this is the season that included, get this, a 23-year-old Ebuka Ubi Uchendo. My name is Ebuka Ubi Uchendo. Are you going to be focusing on the prize, the money, or are you going to be checking out the women, obviously, because you're single? <laughs> well, the truth is, um, it was the money that got me here initially. <laughs> And even though he finished 8th in that year, he has gone on to become probably the most successful housemate in Big Brother Niger history and definitely for that particular season and um, massive respect to him for what he's been able to do and cover over the last, uh, how many years has it been? 15? Wow bro, you're old. And after the first season of Big Brother Niger went well, Big Brother Africa returned for a second season in 2007 and went all the way up until 2014. Now, this is where we talk about the downfall of this show and um, this is where it really starts to get messy. So just under two weeks before the ninth season of the show started, the Big Brother house in Johannesburg burnt down. And unfortunately, this would mean that they would have to shift production. Thankfully, no one was injured, no one was harmed. But the house was burned down so they had to look for a new location but this is just one of the many problems that will start to surface just around the same time as this was happening south africa had also made certain changes to their visa legislation essentially from what i read it had something to do with business visas but what this would mean ultimately is that for people who were picked from countries like ghana and sierra leone those contestants couldn't participate in the show due to these laws. Now, this ended up putting a massive strain on the production as the producers had to go in South Africa looking for people of these nationalities that already
already lived in that country to participate in the show and due to all of this chaos they had to shift the production date the start of the show by about a month so there's all this production strain and everything that's going on the show starts eventually it finishes about two or three months after it starts we have a winner in the end and then we had the situation of a lack of cash considerations and sponsorships and so unfortunately that ended up being the very last season of big brother africa And so for about three years, the concept of Big Brother was just dead on the African continent. And then in 2017, they returned for a second season of Big Brother Niger for the first time in 11 years. Another question that really pops up most of the time is, how is it filmed? I'm very sure that a lot of you have figured out that it is through these tinted windows that the cameras are and that they record everything. And where Coyote, our dearly beloved Coyote, records everything. But I know there's probably that one person going like, okay, but how come the tint isn't showing? And uh, this is where I talk about ND filters. So essentially, when you work with cameras, an ND filter is this piece of uh, plastic that you attach to the front of your camera lens. And it kind of acts like sunglasses, essentially, for a camera. But essentially, what ND filters do is it allows you to control the exposure on your camera to have a bit more of a cinematic feel the color quality is somewhat enriched and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty it pretty much allows you to enable those settings on your camera. But basically, this tinted glass does act as an ND filter for the cameras and I really had a theory about it but it wasn't confirmed until just a few days ago when I was watching the show where I actually noticed that one of the cameras was trying to adjust its exposure level. So, But if you want to be sure, when you are watching the show, if there is a situation where the brightness is probably a little too high and you see it being tuned down, that's the exposure of the camera that they're using being tuned down and so... Yeah. The house is also fitted with ambient microphones, so even if a contestant decides to just throw their microphone away, turn it off, or just flout any of Biggie's microphone rules, those ambient microphones might still get whatever dialogue is being exchanged. But really, if you had to ask me what I think makes this show special, there is quite a lot actually that I could say about it. First of all, let's talk about the different personalities that we get every single year. So we know the drill. Every year, new people come in and we're introduced to many different personalities over the course of time in the Big Brother house. And these personalities could lead to conflicts and uh, the bass boats, as you people like to say, is probably one of the highlights of the show. I mean, we want, we want violence, man. I don't want peace. I want problems always! But sometimes this drama that's generated from these interpersonal relationships in the house influences the decisions of the housemates when they go in for the nomination and that leads to possible evictions of these contestants because uh, you can't stay in there forever. The adverts are also a very serious highlight of the show. This is how the Big Brother house or Big Brother makes their money. And you know, for a company to actually pay for a slot to uh, for their products to be advertised every single hour for an upwards of 72 75 days that's a lot of money folks that's probably millions of dollars right there one thing i really appreciate big brother niger for is it it kind of becomes a space for creators at a certain point in time because when they have to do these tasks and they have to advertise for companies that sponsor the show they get this creativity that's just on the fly it's it's organic it's original it's it's amazing to see some of the things they've been able to do with the housemates and how these housemates can convey certain messages even with emotional skills. I also respect so much how they infuse Nigerian culture. Nigerian culture, Nigerians are so proud of their culture and as an African, it's it's such a joy to see, you know. I wish that more countries would take a cue from this and would actually learn how to infuse their culture in a very vibrant manner. And they do it with the diversity of the cultures they have. Now, it's not like some countries I know where it's supposed to be one language one culture and that's being pushed out and everybody else is being marginalized no it doesn't work that way i like how the show has also been able to provide separate content for show max and how they're able to generate even more revenue through that platform because i mean it's it's really incredible and we actually get some perks if you actually watch the show the gist you actually see so much that you never see on the regular show and uh yeah get the show max account too this is this i'm not i'm not sponsored i'm just saying but show max please if you want to sponsor me you know What's up? And this is probably the biggest part of the show, fan involvement through voting and just the social impact that this show has. But don't take my word for it, I know someone who has a lot of very strong opinions on this. Ayo, so um, uh, let's 
What's up? Yo, bro, what's up? Feels good to be on the channel. Yo, guys, my name is Let's Play, and I'm a guy who likes to say things on the internet. And today I have a thing or two to say about Big Brother Niger. Now, when you talk about the impact of Big Brother Niger on the society, you get mixed reactions. Some people think it's good, some people think it's absolutely bad for the society. The problem with reality TV in general, historically, is that reality TV is rooted in anything but reality. But the thing about Big Brother is it's a bunch of people living their normal lives in a house. It's just they're just there and like sure they have cameras watching them 24 hours a day but the thing is you can't really fake for 24 hours a day especially not in a house where at any time you could have a big guy a guy with a big voice call you from the house and take you to a room to go and i don't know confess your sins ask you questions that thing is weird that that, that part of the show is weird when they are like this girl, this guy this girl report to the diary room and then they go sit down there like big brother I'm, I'm having trouble, I'm having running stomach. Because <laughs> I know people, and I'm sure you know somebody who, the only time they don't watch BBN is when they are asleep. Because here's the thing, if you watch BBN 24 hours a day, at some point you will know so much, you have so much knowledge of BBN, that you can use that knowledge to do something. You can do what we are doing right now, make a video about it, you can write about it, give highlights to people online. You'll build a following in no time, and that following can be leveraged to do something else. And so I think if a lot of youth understood that part of of the whole thing like you don't just have to be a consumer anymore you can use your knowledge of pop culture and use it to do something it wouldn't you know we wouldn't have all this talk from the adults and the old people saying that oh these children are always watching me and you know, what are you doing with your life all that stuff to me bbn is like coffee okay consume it in moderation then you'll be fine if you want to consume it constantly then you can use that extra energy to do something else which is what i said so yeah um, i will be making a video about bbn on my channel very soon so Wait, this is not my channel, so I can see subscribe. Yeah, so subscribe to my channel. Yo, I've never ever said that before. That's crazy. Bro. Subscribe, uh, subscribe. <laughs> Check out my channel and wait for that video. It's, it's coming very soon. So yeah, thanks for having me. And I'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Bro, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, go check his video out when you can. And yeah, he never says subscribe to his channel, but yes, please go and subscribe to his channel as well. Let's I appreciate you, bro. And so this leads to the ultimate question of who is Big Brother? This is going to be a very interesting answer I give. Big brother is you. Big brother is me. Big brother is every single person that takes time out of their day to watch the show. Big brother is the one person who watches 27 out of 24 hours in a day and loses no sleep, monitoring every single move of the housemates, holding conversations on it on social media, and gradually generating success for the show and without the fans big brother probably wouldn't even be a thing so yeah these are my thoughts as a fan on the show and uh thank you so much to everyone that's come to the end of this video to watch um i appreciate you please do subscribe to the channel if you did find this video very interesting and i will see you guys very soon in another video take care happy your dark man i'm out peace